Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more or hire us to do it for you. Let us focus on what we do best so you can stay focused on what you do best. Find all of our options under services, one-to-one training, subscription-based training, or accounting and business consulting. Tracking and managing inventory in QuickBooks Online. It's about buying low and selling high, right? I know that sounds like the stock market, but it's true of inventory. The only difference is that in this case, hopefully you have a little bit more control over the price. But the bottom line, and of course this can get infinitely more complex. We have assembly processes and manufacturing and whatnot. But for the sake of today's example, and so that you can get a good foundation in understanding how to track and manage your inventory, how it all flows from one place to another in the bookkeeping, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to assume we buy a product uh, from a supplier and then we sell it to the world, right? So we're going to do three things. We're going to create a product, then we're going to buy some inventory, and then we're going to sell it. And in order to properly illustrate how QuickBooks Online tracks your inventory costs, we're going to buy the inventory in two lots, right? Because uh, QuickBooks Online uses what's called FIFO or first in, first out costing for cost of goods sold. So you buy the same product at two different prices. It's going to sell out. It's going to sell through the um, older stuff before it gets through the newer stuff. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. So from the overview area in QuickBooks Online, we want to add a product. We want to add the space on our virtual shelf for that product so we can track it properly, right? This is the first step in tracking inventory, which is what you have to do in order to be able to manage it properly. So we can go to the gear icon and go to products and services, or you can come right over here to sales on the left and go to products and services. Why? Because it has everything to do with sales, have everything to do with your products and services. This is the stuff you sell. So let's click new. And we're going to do an inventory part. Inventory part really just means I want to track the quantity in it, right? So we'll call this some amazing product. And the SKU will be SAP. Now, it's important to note the SKU should always be three letters. I mentioned the write-up. QuickBooks Online will allow you to use duplicate SKUs. I highly recommend against it. It can only create a mess if you do that. And the reason it should be at least three is a lot of times the other sort of inventory management software or other products you might eventually use to link up with what's in QuickBooks Online, a lot of them are going to require at least three characters when you're trying to pull them up in a search, right, in a drop-down. So uh, make sure your SKUs are at least three letters long, three characters long. We're going to start with nothing, quantity on hand, and then it wants the as of date. I encourage you to backdate this quite a bit. Otherwise, it's going to create friction. It's only ever created friction for me. For example, if I'm creating this product because I got the bill for the product, the bill is dated three days ago, but now I go to set the product up, and without thinking about it, I put in today's date. In another minute, when I go to enter the bill, QuickBooks Online is going to flag me and say, you can't enter a bill for this product on this date because it's prior to the as of date of the product. It's a mess. So just backdate it. Rest assured, that's what you should do. Inventory asset is the account it goes to when I've recorded the purchase of the product. That's the account on the balance sheet where we want that inventory cost to go. Okay. Then we have the income account. Of course, that's the income account on the profit and loss that's going to get hit when we record the sale of that product. And over here, the expense account is the cost of goods sold account. This is the account that it, it goes to when, when we sell it. It gets taken out of inventory asset, or for that matter, whichever account we choose to put in this drop-down. And it's going to put it into the uh, this account, whatever we put in the expense account drop-down, which, again, is normally cost of goods sold. So let's save and close. So far, there's been no impact to the financials, right? All we did was create the product, right? But we, still, we haven't even bought any of the product yet. We've just made the space for it, so to speak. So now let's record the purchase. Let's go here to my quick create. We're going to create an expense, and we're going to backdate this to uh, September, just so we can create a bit of a timeline on this. So September 1st, I supplier. We're going to pay for it right out of the bank account, and it's important to know where you are. You might actually see the account details first, and if you start trying to enter your product name here, you're going to get frustrated because these are accounts and not products. So you want to make sure you're looking at the item details section here, right? And you can type in anything that would be even in the middle of the name. As you see, I type PROD and it finds it some amazing product. And we're going to buy this in two lots just like in the write up. So 25 of them at $4.50 a piece is $112.50. Let's save a new. But before I create the second one, let's take a look. Nothing happens on the profit and loss because I don't have any sales and I don't have any cost of those sales yet. 
All I've done is buy the product, which means I've taken money out of the bank account and effectively transferred it to inventory. So I have money that came out of the bank account and now it's sitting in the inventory asset in the amount of 11250. Nothing else happened, just transferred money from here to here. Let's go back and record the second lot. This one we're going to do a week later. Again, we're going to buy some amazing product. This time 75 of them. This time we're paying $5. The price went up, right? Save and close. Okay, over here, I can see on my balance sheet, again, same change. I've just taken more cash out to buy more inventory. Still nothing's happened on the profit and loss. Now we want to sell some of it, right? So let's go create a new transaction. We're going to do a sales receipt. We're going to sell it to Shopify sales. Let's say this item sold on Shopify. Let's say this was uh, later on the following week. Product or service. Some amazing product. And we're going to sell 30 of them, which means, remember, that we're going to sell through the whole 25 that we paid for in the original lot and then five in the second lot. So I'm doing this on purpose so we can take a good look at how the cost of goods sold is calculated when we do this. Let's sell these at $20 a piece for a total sale amount of $600. We're depositing that money right into Wells Fargo. So save and close. Let's go back to the balance sheet and see what happened. We're now back to our original million plus one twelve fifty, right? Because we made our money back and then some. Our inventory cost is now down to three fifty. It was four eighty seven fifty, right? On the PL, we have some exciting stuff going on. We've got a sale and now we've got the one thirty seven fifty that came out of inventory, right? This came out of here and it went into here to cost to get sold, right? And so we now have a profit on on the on the product of four sixty two fifty, which is not too shabby, right? So now we want to take a look at how that cost of goods sold was calculated. How do we get 137.50 in cost of goods sold? Well, I mapped it out for you here. Here were the original purchases. We bought 25 of them at 4.50 for a total of 112.50. Another 75 at 5 for a total of 375. So initially, our inventory valuation was $100 at an average cost of 488, and for a grand total of 487.50. Then we have the sale. I sold 25 of them at 450 for the whole 11250 from the first lot and then five of them at $5 for another $25 comes to 13750. So that's how it calculates the cost of sales when you record a sale in QuickBooks online. That my friends is really the first part of tracking and managing inventory in QuickBooks online. Once you take some time and get this down, we're going to do a follow-up post real soon to take this one step further and look at a detailed report that helps you now analyze, which is really the managing part, your inventory in a little greater depth than what we've done here. My friends, if you like this, if you found it helpful, please like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, please share it with all your friends and family and loved ones. That's the best way you can thank me for producing this incredible, valuable, free content online. As always, if you have any questions or need anything more, feel free to reach out to us. All the information for how to reach me is pretty easy to find on my website right here on YouTube. Give us a call at 866-945-8070 and I'll be happy to get you any help that you need.